Hi everybody, welcome back to the Feynman Technique. Um, today we'll be evaluating another integral that I got off the channel five, Maths 505. I will link to his video in the description, check it out. Um, my uh, solution process is a little bit different than his. Um, we both use, uh, I believe, I'm not sure if he uses Feynman integration in his solution or not, but I know our, uh, our solutions uh, differ um, quite a bit. So um, I don't feel too bad about uh, using his integral so soon after he posted it. Uh, but anyway, let's just get started. And uh, a quick note, this is actually going to be um, my 150th example of solving an integral using Feynman integration. And uh, this integral um, happens to share a form with the very first integral that I solved on this channel. So um, that, that's kind of a, a nice circling back to my, uh, my number, my uh, first example of Feynman integration. Of course, it's a lot more complicated than that, but um, you'll, you'll see what I mean. And the integral that I'm talking about that I solved in my first video was just the integral from zero to one of uh, x squared minus one over natural log x dx which evaluated to natural log three. And this one is, is going to be uh, have a similar form to that one. And you'll see what I mean as we continue, but let's get going. So the first step is to just express cosine natural log X using complex exponentials. Um, and we can use Euler's formula for that. Um, says that E to the I theta is cosine theta plus I sine theta. You guys all know that. Therefore the real part of cosine theta or I'm sorry, cosine theta is the real part of e to the i theta. Um, therefore, we can write cosine natural log x as the real part of e to the i natural log x. And then using the properties of uh, logarithms, we can just express that as the real part of x to the i, since e to the i natural log x is x to the i. So now we have our uh, integral expressed like this. i is equal to the real part of the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus x times x to the i over natural log x. Next, let's just simplify this a little bit. Basically, I'm just distributing that x to the i. All right, uh, the next part, we are going to define a uh, function of t um, that uh, resembles our uh, integral. Um, just replacing this I right here with a T. And of course, we're not taking the real part of this yet. We will do that after we find out what this integral evaluates to. Um, and we can see that when, when T is equal to I, of course, we get this part right here without the, the real part. Um, and when T is one plus I, we get zero because if we substitute one plus i in here for t, we just get something minus the exact same something, which is just zero. So that uh, whole thing would converge to, would uh, evaluate to zero. So basically we can say f at one plus i is equal to zero, and um, f at i is equal to, well, the real part of f of i is equal to our original integral. All right, moving along. Let's just take the derivative of our f of t um, with respect to t using the Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign, which says that we can pass this derivative inside the integral as a partial derivative. Um, and what we get if we do that, if we take the partial derivative with respect to t of this integrand right here, we just get x to the t since um, x to the one plus i is independent of t. All right, so evaluating that integral, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go over that. Um, that evaluates easily to 1 over t plus 1. So, um, since our f prime of t is equal to 1 over t plus 1, we can find f of t just by taking its antiderivative. And if you do that, you get natural log of t plus 1 plus c. So now we need to uh, find c by using the fact that we know that f at t plus 1 is equal to, uh, t plus i is equal to 0. 
So we plug that into our function uh, f of t, and we can find that c is going to be equal to the negative natural log of 2 plus i. All right. So we now have an explicit form of f of t. f of t is the natural log of t plus 1 minus natural log 2 plus i. All right. So now let's actually take the real part of um, this function of t evaluated at the point t is equal to i. Uh, we can use the properties of logarithms. Uh, you can see all I did was replace the t with an i and then use the properties of the natural log to rewrite it like this. All right, so now the challenge is to take the real part of that. Well, we can do that uh, using the following steps. We can, um, we can write 1 plus i over 2 plus i as 3 plus i over 5. All you do is multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate of 2 plus i, and you get this. Um, so we know that um, the, um, the modulus is basically the, the magnitude, um, and the argument is theta. So if you were to rewrite that as r, the magnitude times e to the i theta, our r would be equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. Um, and the argument, which we're not actually going to need, is equal to the arctangent of the um, imaginary component divided by the real component. Um, so we would get arctangent 1 over 3 in that case. Um, but anyway, this is, this is what we end up we, with. We, we, we will see that the natural log of 1 plus i over 2 plus i is just the natural log of the square root of 10, that's the uh, modulus, times e to the i theta, where theta is our argument for arctangent 1 over 3. Um, well, i times the argument. So basically, natural log of this thing right here is the natural log of the square root of 10 over 5 plus i times our argument. Um, taking the real part of that is very easy. Um, this imaginary part will just drop out. So we see that the real part of natural log of 1 plus i over 2 plus i is just the natural log of the square root of 10 over 5, and that means we're pretty much done. So we know that i is the real part of our f of t evaluated at i, and we just found out that that's equal to natural log square root of 10 over 5, and that is our answer. All right, guys, uh, again, um, check out Math 505's video on this. We get the exact same thing as we should. Um, and like I said, his, his solution is uh, process is slightly different than mine. Um, but anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that, and we'll see you next time.